What is going on guys, my name is Bryce and today I'm going to show you guys how to wire up one of these inductive sensors to an MKS S-Base. Alright guys, so I have the inductive sensor set up right here and I've got it connected to a lab bench power supply. This is just some cheap crappy power supply that I got off eBay. And I'm going to demonstrate to you guys why these don't really work um, at lower voltages. So if I turn this on, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that says 12 volts. All right. Um, currently, I've got our, uh, this is a normally open uh inductive sensor so if i probe i've got our positive connected to our sense line and we connect to ground we're currently getting 12 volts um currently coming out of the sense line now if you guys can see i'll show you guys the camera as much as possible currently this little led is off um this little led see if it will want to focus um, i know it's not focusing but you guys can see the leds off and then we as soon as the enough uh, uh, piece of iron or metal comes close enough to the inductive sensor, it turns on and it's really, really bright, which is good. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to prop this sensor up where it's it's currently on. I know you guys probably can't see the glow from it, but it's on because of the I've got the metal um, side cutters right next to it. But now if we look at the sense line. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the the voltage now coming out of the sense line is 0 0.687 volts, which is perfect for being able to determine whether or not the uh, whether or not the inductive sensor is triggered or not. Only problem is though is when it's normally open. So if we remove that away and the inductive sensor doesn't send a sense line, 12 volts. You can't feed 12 volts into the in end stop connectors on an MKSS base or just about any board for that matter because 12 volts is ridiculously uh, high voltage. These these boards run at 3.3 or 5 volts so either we're going to have to make a voltage divider um, or a reverse diode setup. But if I flick this switch and it goes to, it goes to 4 volts, we'll bump it up to 5 volts. Um, and now we're at 5 volts, if we probe the sense line, currently open, it is at 5 volts. But if I show you guys, LED, now when I bring something close to it, it's really, really dull. And it, it, it just doesn't have enough, uh, enough juice. Now, currently open, we saw that it was at roughly 5 volts, or it was 5 volts. Now, if I prop this up and put something in front of it, it's now on. Oh, yep, it's definitely on. Sometimes it's really hard to tell. It's now on, but if I probe the the sense line, I'm, I'm only getting 4.7 volts out of the probe, out of the uh, out of the sense line, meaning that the the voltage drop across the sense line is is too great. And although we're working at five volts, the MKS S base can't determine whether or not it's been triggered or not. Because at 0.3 of a volt is not not really open or closed. Open and closed is normally one or zero or nothing straight to ground or something at a higher voltage. That's normally why you get the other probes that will take uh, take five volts and when it's triggered it will drop down to about 0 0.6 as well. And that voltage variant is what the uh, what the actual board uses to be able to know whether or not the probe has been triggered. All right, guys, so as you can see, just looking at this schematic of the uh, S-Base, we've got our Z-Min here that we need. That's our plug there. As you can see with the layout, we have our 5 volts, our ground, and then our pin 1.28, which is our sense wire. Now, if we continue, if we want to use 12 volts, we don't need to connect to the 5-volt line. We will need to connect to the ground, um, so it has ground reference. Um, and then our sense line here, because if we're connecting to 12 volts, we're going to need some sort of uh, resistor 
um, or like a, uh, a voltage divider or something to reduce the amount of voltage coming into this uh, coming into this pin because if we if we this is five volts and this is ground um, because of the sensor would be being fed with five volts when it closes it's going to be feeding this pin with five volts which is how it knows what's going on but if you feed 12 volts into that that's way higher than five volts it's you know it's almost one and a half times more um, than the size of or the amount of voltage so it's going to blow that pin out so we're going to need to either use a couple of resistors to create a voltage drop or use a reverse diode which will pretty much allow only a certain amount of voltage to go through but it's it's not as easy to do um so I'll, I'll show you what i come up with i'm probably going to use a voltage divider but again if you're using a a probe that will properly close at um at, at uh five volts then you won't need to do any of this you can just hook up your your blue to your to your ground your brown to your five volts and your black wire your sense wire to the um the pin 28 here and you want to connect it to your Z min. Um, I know a lot of uh, I know a lot of people say with the uh, with the S base and just smoothie wear in general, your probes are not meant to be connected to um, to your actual uh, end stop connector, um, and it is not meant to be white in like that. Um, and and you can do it other ways. So you can also um, I'll show you guys. You guys can't see this yet, but up here in our J eight section, this is. Uh, that is this section of pins right here at the top of the boards, right next to the batch of LEDs uh, right here. So uh, these pins, you've got a ground right there. You've got ground right there. Um, there's no voltage along here, but you can pull voltage from a set of pins. These pins here, you can pull voltage from these pins. Um, so this is also another set of pins right here. Um, I'll show you. It's really hard to do this. Uh, so that that's these these pins right here. So you can actually connect um, your five volts and your ground up here. Um, you can use these pins. I probably would prefer to use the ones up on this end, which is actually what I used to do with the BL Touch as well. Um, so you can connect one of the sense pins to like um, one two two or one two three, something like that. Um, you can do that and have the probe configured to be a probe and then you still have a Z-min. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, I was always having problems with that. Um, the probe would not really work properly or just rely on the, um, on the min. So I, I do, although a lot of people don't recommend it, I do recommend using the uh, Z-min um, and just making sure that you have things set up so that if it is set up correctly, the probe is going to stop it from crashing into the bed regardless. Um, and of course, with the probe, you also got the uh, the threaded um, nuts and washers you can use to adjust the height so that um, you can have it set up so it won't crash into the bed. Um, and then that way, if it's connected to your power supply, it's going to power up every single time the printer does. Um, and the printer should not crash at all into the bed. Um, I've always had end stops move and the end stops end up causing it to crash into the bed more than a probe does. So I'm going to show you guys what I come up with to be able to connect the 12 volt line into that sense line. Alright guys, so uh, I've done some digging around and I'm going to just show you guys something um, that I found out while I was working on this. Uh, so we want to make a voltage divider to reduce the amount of voltage um, coming from the 12 volt in line which is the brown and coming out of the sense line which will be 12 volts when it's not uh, not touching or not detecting anything and it goes straight to ground when it does so pretty much we need to check things um, and one thing I found out was with um, with these particular inductive sensors they actually do have an internal resistor that's not really shown. So if we turn our meter onto ohms, as you guys can see there, 
we get about 9.9 .9 or pretty much 10k uh, resistance, which if you do the math, um, all right, so before I was, I was trying to use two resistors, and that's not going to work because technically that means we have three resistors because there's a there's actually a resistor inside the the actual inductive sensor so if i now now knowing that we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor in the inductive sensor we can now take our brown wire and stick that into our 12 volt source and tighten that down and now if we do the math for a voltage divider, we need something like a 7 point something or other kilo ohm resistor, but that's a little bit of an unusual value. So I've got a 6.8k resistor. It's just one of these guys here. I don't know if you guys can see that. 6k8, which is 6.8k. Um, if we put the 6.8k resistor across our ground and our sense line and then we turn our meter to volts and then we turn our power supply on as you can see we're sitting at 12 volts now if I probe the ground and the other side of the sense line it's currently 4 volts or 4.8 so it's pretty much 5 volts and if I take the uh, the sensor and trigger it, which is a little bit harder to do when it's not actually hooked up to anything. So we trigger the sensor and then we check it again, and it's showing 0 0.6 volts, which should be plenty to be able to show a a uh, voltage drop. Alright guys, so I have the probe wired up. Um, I don't want to move it too much because the uh, positive is just sort of sitting in there. Um, but I've got it wired up into our Zmin over there. It's just a little JST connector with... I know you guys can't see that because it's not focusing. But it's a little JST connector with a, with a um, little bit of the resistor sticking out. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but if I get close, it lights up still. So I am going to move the uh, I'm going to move the bed down. Uh, I'll go down a little bit more so you guys can see. So now we got the bed down. I'm going to click home. It's going to constant. It's going to go up and then. And then it homed because I touched the uh, the probe near the metal. Now again, this is not very good at detecting through glass, as you can see. Oh, you guys can't see that. Give me a sec. As you guys can see, it doesn't light up through glass because of the detection distance. It doesn't... The detection distance for... Uh, for aluminum is pretty low. Um, I do believe it's only roughly about, uh, I'd want to say like, it's less than a millimeter. I know that. I think it is about a millimeter. Yeah, it's about a millimeter. But there you guys go. It's pretty straightforward to actually hook one of these guys up. Um, I'm not going to wire this into this hypercube. I'm going to be wiring this guy into a different hypercube uh, but it, it, it's all the same like with the MKSS base uh, I do believe from um, the ramps and the Marlin stuff that's all the same uh, you just need to make sure that your configuration for your uh, for your end stops are set to the fact that they need to be I uh, believe it's normally open or they are not pulled I think they're they're pulled up or pulled down, I believe. Actually, my thing is pulled down. I know I didn't actually need to configure mine to actually work because my end stops are configured the same. Uh, pretty much, uh, you need it to be uh, zero when it's not triggered and one when it is triggered. 
Um, if yours is the other way around, or you can just go into your firmware and reverse it. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward to do. It's not overly hard. You just need to know the knowledge of the fact that the, the probe itself already has a resistor in it. So to do a voltage divider, you only need one resistor rather than two. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I am sorry about the delay in videos. I am working up a small catalogue. But uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a good day. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the, in the uh, comments. And uh, make sure you like the video. It really does help us out. Peace.